uh, in this lecture, I am going to discuss on the on a practical example of how noise and vibration inside a railway locomotive are measured both uh, during stationary conditions and while the locomotive is on the tracks and running at or traveling at a certain speed. Well, uh, just to recollect, you know, when we talk about design of machinery, you know, today in the transportation sector, uh, we are all concerned about the noise being emitted by vehicles which are flying on the road, railway locomotives flying on the railway tracks. So, there are two issues in it. One is the noise level inside the cavity or the passenger compartments or the driver's cabin vis a vis the noise outside to the passerbys or to the bystanders either along the track side or at a railway platform or on the roads. So, we need to see what is the present condition of the machinery from the noise and vibration measurements. So, this I am going to talk about on railway locomotive noise and vibration mounting. This is a case, case study on a work we did for the Indian railways and uh, so railway So, when we have a cab, this is the track and somebody is measuring the SPL in the cab and the vibration level. So, these are influenced by most important is the condition of the tracks. Okay. And of course, the transmission path By the transmission path, I mean the energy getting transferred from the tracks, okay, either directly or that is the structure bone or the air bone. Okay. The question we are doing this study is can we know the condition of the track the track from the measured noise and vibration. There are many empirical studies being done where with the speed of the vehicle, either the SPL or vibration follow some curve. I would not like to characterize such values, but then some says it is proportional to velocity 4, some models proportional to and so on okay. and then few constants are there. Okay. So, but then when we are monitoring at a particular vehicle speed, we need to measure for a new track or an worn out track, because energy transfer is because of the wheel rail interaction.
and the surface roughness. both on the wheel and the track play an important role. So, if tracks get worn out they will produce a noise of a different spectra. So, this is what needs to be studied. Uh, we did it for the case of Indian railways for a particular class of locomotive, because this was never being done for the Indian railways and we at IIT Kharagpur did it for the very first time. Uh, fortunately, uh, we have a big uh, railway workshop at Kharagpur. So, the railways were kind enough to give us this locomotive to do our noise and vibration measurement trials. Well, the, there were many objectives in this work. One was to reduce the interior noise levels of the cabin. Both there are two cabins, one at the rear and the front or they are known as cab 1 and cab 2. One close to the radiator fan, another close to the engine end. And uh, these railway locomotives are mounted on two bogies which hold the under frame and over the under frame is the cab structure which has been put and engine sits somewhere in between. Now, as I was telling you when this is plying on the tracks at a certain speed, there is a certain amount of vibration in the floor of the cab and also the sound pressure level. So, to do this experiment what we did is you know we instrumented the cab with two ends both in both the cabs this is a cam because this train can either go, the locomotive can go either this way or this way and the driver needs to change its position. Okay. Now, we kept our instrumentation and this is about close to about 20 meter long. Okay. So, I am telling you the practical scenario of putting such uh, measurement in place. So, we had our data recorder. Okay. So, basically we put one microphone here SPL 2, SPL 1 and then vibration 1 and vibration 2. Now, in one location we put our data recorder and that is this yellow box which you see. Okay. And uh, those of you who are doing a lot of field measurements, it is good to get rid of some nice strong portable hard cases for your instruments. Such boxes you know which we call our favorite pelican yellow boxes you can transport lot of delicate equipment be it transducers, be it your cameras, be it your recorders. So, I usually have you know about 4 or 5 of them in my lab, wherein we take all our equipment because when you talk about FFT analyzers, you talk about sensitive microphones, accelerometers, charge amplifiers. Because many a times as you would see, you would have gotten feel from this course that uh, though we have demonstrated to you many vibration issues from signals coming out of a machinery fault simulator to understand whether a misalignment has occurred or an unbalance has occurred. Many times we have to go to the site be it a port, be it a cement plant, a mine, a steel plant, 
Okay. So, how do we and all for this matter a railway road uh, or a railway locomotive. So, how do we transport our equipment? So, it is good that you must have some strong instrumented cases to carry your equipment. Now, the most important equipment here is the data recorder. Okay. The reason we have this data recorder is because you see there are four channels, one vibration, two vibrations and two sound pressure levels. So, the cable and the data recorder is fixed at one place and you can see in such field measurements it is good to have the piezoelectric accelerometer cables should not be whipping around. So, it is good to anchor them with a duct tape okay, which can peel off, but which is very strong and it holds on to this. So, this is the carpet of the floor of the cab and these are the two charge amplifiers one for the uh, for the accelerometer and uh, two for the sorry uh, one for the uh, two accelerometers and two microphones. Okay. Because one thing I must tell you about this data recorder this data recorder is an 8 channel NAT recorder, which takes only voltage input to a max of 10 volts. But when we have the accelerometer, or the microphones, okay. they will uh, give you a voltage amplifier, voltage signal only if they have been conditioned with their corresponding charge amplifier. And these are all charge type accelerometers and condenser microphones. The reason in real field measurements when the charge accelerometers are used because of the high temperature. Okay. So, we used high temperature charge accelerometers and similarly condenser microphones which require a polarizing voltage. So, it is measuring power supply. So, the output of this is a voltage signal which goes to the DAT recorder. So, DAT recorder we can record all the way from 0 to 20 kilohertz. The reason we do this is because when you are going on the tracks in a train you know particularly Indian trains you can see how much of vibrations it is there. So, it becomes humanly impossible to uh, do any meaningful signal analysis. So, this is true for the case of a cement plant and a coal mine right in situ analysis is very limited. So, it is good to store all your signals in a data recorder like this. So, to summarize in order to carry this equipment to the site we need to have such cases and particularly in, in CBM when you are doing a lot of industrial monitoring in the field it is good to have such equipment. So, and then another thing is that when you are talking about this uh, 20 meter long. So, I need to lay the cables all along the locomotive frame to go to the recorder. So, we need to have long cables. Okay. So, when we have long cables, we do not know what is the voltage drop. Okay. So, we also need to do what is known as the in situ in situ calibration of the signal and it is good to store a uh, 
calibration file or calibration signal in the tape recorder. Uh, this I am uh, telling purely from my practical experience doing measurements in the field that it is a very good idea uh, because see when I look into the sensitivity of a transducer say it is written as you know 10 pico coulomb per meter per second square okay and then times its voltage you know maybe some voltage sensitivity 1 millivolt per pico coulomb so then this will boil down to 10 millivolt per meter per second square okay but this is when i have a transducer and then i am measuring it within a maybe 1 meter of cable uh, some voltage measuring source transducer being a piezoelectric accelerometer now what if this length becomes long becomes 20 meters or becomes 100 meters in many of the field applications. So, it is always good to give a calibrated signal here calibrator and if you know this calibrator is giving you a mechanical acceleration of 10 meters per second. So, whatever voltage you are getting on the voltmeter or recording you know that corresponds to 10 meters per second square okay, even with a large cable. So, if there is a voltage drop in this cable it will be accounted for within this calibration signal. So, henceforth when you do a real measurement without the calibrator whatever voltage you get you can always relate to this. So, always in the field measurements it is uh, when you are recording data it is good that you have recorded a known calibration signal. Now, this is a view of the charge amplifier used for the accelerometer and you can see how this duct tapes come handy to anchor it. They are temporary anchoring because I do not want to obviously, permanently mount these and then you can see the accelerometer mounted in the door column of the cab and these cables are always strapped down. So, that they do not move around and same is for the microphone you know microphone is suspended from the ceiling okay, and then uh, all these cables go up to the data recorder. Uh, this is the the same locomotive 40317 which was there in the workshop we ran it from uh, Kharagpur railway station to uh, Narayangarh it is a close to about 30 kilometers either way. So, we went up 30 kilometers down the track and then 30 kilometers back to our Kharagpur railway workshop wherein I had the crew cab the crews to help me okay, they drove the locomotive, but I was there uh, doing all the recordings. Incidentally these locomotives now also have data loggers wherein as soon as you start the engine, it will keep a log of the engine conditions by mean what is the engine speed okay, and the power output. Okay. The reason uh, this power output is very easily measured uh, because these diesel locomotives actually have an electric series traction motor. So, they measure the voltage and current and then they can estimate the power, but this engine speed is very important and most important is the vehicle speed or the 
locomotive linear speed along with the present time and date stamp. Okay. And they record it in every one second, every one second this information is there in a data logger and once you have done the journey, you can hook up to the data logger and pull out all this data and uh, this helps uh, both in, you know, in monitoring the health of the locomotive, doing any you know, accident analysis, checking out the driver's uh, profile, the driver ride, uh, riding, uh, driving it correctly and so on. So, this helps. So, to this we what we did is we interfaced our data. Okay. So, this is uh, myself you know, in the driver's loco, okay, where in this queue I give in to the data recording as it looking at the engine speed, what is the speed, what conditions and that date was a rainy morning in uh, July. Okay. And you see this is the loco speed in kilometers per hour and this we pulled out of the data logger and this is the actual time. We started somewhere from Kadakpur around you know, 8 in the morning. Okay. We were shunting okay, till we got a go ahead to go on the tracks okay, and then about 9 46 to about uh, close to about 10 about you know somewhere around you know, 15 to 20 minutes either way okay. and then uh, we stopped for a while you can see here 10 or 3 and 10 42. Okay. We stopped the engine because we had to turn around in a different cab okay. because there is a cab 1, cab 2, 1 while going forward in one direction and we pulled it back from the other direction. So, you can see momentarily there was an increase in the vehicle speed because you know the driver sped up and then of course, we reached up to 120 kilometers per hour in a short stretch and then we again came back to uh, Kadakpur. So, this is the real time log. And as I was mentioning you, this engine has a speed log during the trials again okay, 1040, 1041. So, this is the engine RPM. So, engine was highly, you know, engine can go up to about 800, 900 RPM and it is the diesel engine. So, um, we were, uh, they go, there was hardly any load. Okay, so, the engine did not drive up because there is an empty loco and that instance where the speed up suddenly it has gone up a notch and these engines are very nicely you can adjust the notches and reduce the engine speed. And again uh, there was a lull because we stayed from 10 to 1041 here and then we came back to Kadakpur. So, engine speed was not much okay, and it varied from 200 to 300 rpm and uh, this is the relative time you know about 1500 um, seconds and that boil boiled down to how much about 25 minutes or so. Okay. And uh, this is the SPL in cab 1 while going from Kharagpur to Narangad. The overall S sound pressure level in dBA scale is what we have measured in the cab 1. And you see as soon as you run up, no, these are uh, these are certain high levels because when you leave the Kharagpur station, there is a lot of track changing which occurs. You know, when the locomotive moves from one track to another, you hit the gaps in the tracks, and then once you are on the smooth track, this is the overall level about you know 95 to 100 decibel is the noise level. Okay, when you are running even at speeds of, if you see average speed is about about 100 kilometers per hour. Okay. So, this is the cabin noise level. Of course, you know we need to correlate again to the track roughness. And the noise and vibration level. 
this being a, a public forum, I cannot discuss all the results here, but those who are interested can contact me through my website. And then I can be glad to share more information on this. And then if you look at the vibration level okay, from 0 to 10 meters per second square. So, when the you are running comfortably, these levels are on the floor of the cap about 2 to 3 uh, meters per second square. Okay. And then a similar thing happened in cap 2, okay, which there was another end because we instrumented four cap, uh, two caps, cap 1 and cap 2. So, cap 1 noise and vibration, cap 2 noise and vibration. So, in one way, so there is this data again and a similar level this is the SPL from okay, and then the vibration level. Okay. So, certain instances occur okay, where it is suddenly gone up. So, you get and then this is the on the return path cab 1 and okay, and then the vibration path. So, what I need to say is uh, some of these data as recorded can be analyzed and then we can interpret many things are the levels as per the ISO standards, are the sound levels as per the human comfort of the crew and what improvements needs to do uh, vis a vis what is the track condition. So, all this can be done and these can be instrumented permanently also in the locomotive and so on. Okay. So, just this gave you an overview of how in a practical situation you can do noise and vibration measurements for monitoring the condition of an equipment. Okay. Thank you.